Hey guys, so uh, happy December, got all my Christmassy stuff up as you can see. This is a question and answer video. On Instagram I said, do you want to ask me some questions, anything you've been wanting to ask me and I will answer them honestly. I just felt like a kind of question answer video or a tag video. So I got some questions, so I'm just going to answer them, okay? So we'll try and plod through it as quick as we can, taking 30 seconds to get to here. Alright, so I'm going to start off with question number one. And this is from CrazyKY97, which is Kylie Pritchard. Okay, so Kylie, you asked me, what's your favourite thing about Christmas? Favourite thing about Christmas is the kindness, the twinkly lights, the happiness, how everyone is happily and sparkly and there's so much glitter. And I love the lead up more than the actual day, I think. Um, it's nothing about presents for me at all. It's all about the experience, the nativity plays, the Christmas baits, the turning on the Christmas lights, the putting up the Christmas tree, Christmas movies, hot chocolate, watching White Christmas, watching It's a Wonderful Life. All of those kind of things is what makes Christmas special for me. Christmas Day is a lovely day and I enjoy it, but it's kind of hectic, isn't it? <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's probably it. And I love gift giving as well. I like to see people's faces when they get gifts. That's nice as well. And the kids, I mean... Christmas without the kids would be a really dull Christmas, I can imagine. I would be, I don't know what I'd be doing. But with the children, it's seeing them excited by all that stuff. And on Christmas morning for them is wonderful. If you get through the stress of the rest of it. <laughs> right, okay, number two. What are your three Holy Grail makeup products? Oh, yikers. Foundation, 100%. Couldn't live without foundation because my face is a mess. Um highlight nowadays i can't really i might this has changed if we had asked last last year and i'd like to go back and see um my eyebrow the goof proof i can't live without it i need to buy it even when i skint i bought it and highlight a little bit i like a little bit of highlight so i have highlight just on my eyelids today because it's a school run morning it's really busy and i've just got back from my mum's so i put a bit of highlight on there highlight on my cheeks i'm done so yeah i would say those three Number three, if you could go any in the, anywhere in the world, where would it be? If it was to be on a normal day, it would be Graceland. I'd love to go to Memphis any day of the week, if you ask me, it'd probably be that. But at winter time, I kind of crave Salzburg or Vienna or Switzerland or Austria. Well, obviously I've said cities in Austria, but that is kind of my go-to place in the winter. And I've been to Vienna once, which I just absolutely loved. And I went to Salzburg, which I absolutely loved. And I have been to Switzerland and stayed in a little cabin in the Alps. And it was just one of the most beautiful experiences. I spent my Christmas there and it was just the nicest experience I've ever had in my life. Apart from Memphis and Graceland. So I think around about this time I crave those winter places. And me and my husband have thought about going to Lapland maybe. But Lapland doesn't have snow at the moment, I've heard. So we probably got it colder here. Right, okay, that is all the questions from Kylie. Thank you so much. All right, next one is from Kimberly Anon, and it's if you became a millionaire overnight, what would you buy first? A house, I would definitely buy a house. I rent my house, so um, I'd buy this house, I think, and put a granny flat in the back for my mum um, so that I could just get to her in two seconds flat. She wouldn't want to live in here with the, all the noise of the kids. And um, yeah, I'd like to stay in my street. I'd like to do all the things. I would probably not tell anybody I was a millionaire. I would just stay where I am with the family, um, have no money worries for the rest of my life, go on lots of holidays. But I probably wouldn't move my kids away or tell anybody. I'd try and keep it the same normal life that we've got now, but with extra money, if that makes sense. Because money, my, I like my life the way it is. Money would just give me no worries about bills being paid. So I guess the first thing I would buy is my house, 100%. I'd go to my landlord and say, can I buy the house, please? Definitely. And then I would go and get my driving license and get myself a car. And then I would just put Elvis all over my car. i put TCB, get Elvis um, things for my covers, for my ch chairs. I'd get an Elvis steering wheel cover. It would just make it into an Elvis mobile. That's my plan. <laughs> Right, then the next question is from Makeup Lover 1983, which is Julie Barber, and she said, other than Elvis, what is your passion? That's tricky. Other than Elvis, what is your passion? Eating, I think. <laughs> Obviously, family always comes first anyway, and it, family becomes first before Elvis at all times. But if you're taking away family and Elvis, what's my next passion? It'd be eating. 
I absolutely love to eat. I love all foods and I love to cook foods. Well, I don't. I'm not a very good cook, but I like my husband to cook and then for me to eat it. So I think probably that's my passion. But if eating can't be a passion, can it? If I don't see eating, it's probably TV and movies. I love TV. I love TV series. We are obsessed by the box. I'm obsessed by everything TV. I love Saturday night telly. I love Friday night telly. I love Sunday telly. I love all weekday telly. So I just love telly. This is maybe my obsession. Right, um, then I think that was it from me, Julie. I think it was. Now the next one is a life in high definition and she asked me loads of questions. So here we go with number one. Thank you for the questions, by the way. Number one, what made you decide to have children? Well, in my first relationship, I couldn't have children. So I didn't think I could. Then when I met my husband now, he said he didn't want children. And I said, I can't have any. So what a great match. And then a year later, we had the children. So what made me want to have children is I tried for children for 10 years before I met my husband now. And we had IVF and stuff and, and nothing worked. And it just wasn't happening for me. But I always wanted kids. I'm a nursery nurse. I've worked with children my whole entire life. So it was something that naturally I wanted to have myself. And I got it with Di. Okay, number two. Were you just ready or was it a surprise? So yes, I was completely ready because I had tried for 10 years. But I didn't think I would have them. So it was a massive surprise. Like the biggest surprise you could ever have in your entire history of your life. It was that big of a shock. Especially to my husband. <laughs> Because obviously he had went in there thinking we would never have kids when we did. But he loved it. He was so happy. Um, and then is two enough? Yes, two is enough. Never having more. Now I love children and I love my boys, but they fight from morning until night time. Then there's no in between. Well, they do. They love each other sometimes, maybe one minute out of a day. So yeah, I would never add a third into it. If someone could say to me magically, I'll give you a girl, I would do that right now. Because I would love a little girl, I'd love a daughter, but that's just not going to happen. So, no, the two is enough, way enough. Number four, would you learn Welsh and are your born... Uh, and then the next question is, are your boys taught it? So, I would not learn Welsh because it looks so tricky. Um, I probably know a few more words than I've thought of before. Bora da. Um, I do know how to sing happy birthday in Welsh, I think. And my boys do it, <laughs> but I'm not very good. So yeah, the boys are taught it in school and they say, so they say loads of Welsh words when they come home and they sing happy birthday in Welsh all the time. So it was started last month when they did mum's birthday message or their uncle Simon's the month before and they sang happy birthday and then sang it in Welsh and I thought, oh, I never knew you could sing it in Welsh. So that was cool. Best memories of your mum and dad, husband and boys. So I don't know if that means all of them together, but best memories of my mum and dad are tons unbelievable because my parents were fantastic. They were married for 55 years together and they were together for even longer. They met when they were like 15, 16 and my dad was 75 when he died and they'd been together all that time. And I came along late. My sisters are in their 20s. I have two sisters and they are 20 years older than me and they have children of their own. And like their oldest child, Lisa, is actually my niece. So I'm her auntie, but we're the same age, although I'm a year older. So we were at school together and stuff. So it's really weird, but there's so many good memories from all of that. Just tons. And unbelievable amounts of memories for my husband um, when we first got together and just everything. Because we had, it was just brilliant and I love him to bits. And we've just done so many good things and so many Elvis things that um, that makes the memories even more special because we both love Elvis. And... We both kind of obsess over that, so we have the best Elvis memories in the world. And the boys are just amazing. Their memories every minute of the day is a new memory made. Okay, so thank you very much. Next one is Nikki Pearson. Who are your heroes? My hero is obviously Elvis Presley, big time. Um, and other heroes are firefighters, nurses, doctors, the NHS, people who help us, teachers who do things that are every day going in, like when we had the snowstorms down here in the valleys, nurses were walking to the hospital, actually walking through insane terrain, through the snow, and it was just insane. And then we had people coming out with four wheel drives, taking these nurses to their shifts so that they were there for the people who were in hospital. And unbelievable, they're the heroes of this country, for sure. 
and um, thank you, that's it. Right, Lady Mawa, uh, I think Lady Mawa asked a few actually, uh, I think you did, yeah. It was other than Elvis, no, 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 that's not it, that's Julie Barber's question. Um, uh, what is your earliest childhood memory? Uh, I can remember getting my jabs. So when was that? I don't know when it would be. I'm looking down here because I can't remember what arm it's on. But I actually have the scar where I had my jabs. And I kind of remember going. But then there is another weird memory that always stays with me now. And I don't know where it came from. And I think it was when my mum lost her mum. So I remember a woman with a trench coat and a headscarf walking and crying her heart out. And I was walking with her. Now, that is my earliest childhood memory, and I don't know who it's from, and mum can't remember, but I think because I must have been little and I've never seen my mum cry, she lost her mum when I was about four, so I'm thinking that's it. And then I also remember coming into my living room and my dad asking me to sing uh, All Shook Up, <laughs> and I didn't know any of the words, and I was singing, and he was going, that's great, sing, sing, keep singing. And I was like, All Shook Up, mm -hmm -hmm. but I didn't know any of the words. So yeah, that's three childhood memories. Right, and then there is another one, which was, if you could go back 20 years to give yourself one piece of advice, what would it be? Hmm, I think I would stay, I think what I would say was, try not to hurt people along the way. It's probably what I would, do everything you do, try and get to the end result that you've got now, try not to hurt anyone on the way. So that's probably what the piece of advice that I would give to myself 20 years before. Yeah, because I wouldn't want anything to change because I wouldn't want to not have my children and my husband. So yeah, that would be it. And the next one is from Rachel Michelle 8282 If you were on a desert island and could only bring five things, not people, only things. Right, I think I would take... Oh, gosh, that's tricky, isn't it? My mobile phone, 100%. Because even if you can't get signal nowadays, you could have downloaded a few movies before it or downloaded some songs that are offline. So then at least you've got something, but then you couldn't charge it. So what would be the point? No, I'm not, I'm not going to scrap that. I'm not going to take my mobile phone. I think I would probably take a knife. So that if I needed to cut up something like fish or... I hate fish, but I would if I was starving. Um, so maybe like survival stuff. So fish, string... Um, some sort of clothing, warm clothing that you could have to face the elements. So that's three. <laughs> so two more things. Um, so more string, maybe, because then you could help make a fishing rod to uh, cook some fish with your knife. I would take a lighter, but it'd run out. So I'd have to maybe make it the old fashioned way with sticks and, or stones or something and make fire. Um, maybe some photos. Yeah, I would take some photos, old school. Take some photos in like a photo album so that you could always remember your family and look back at stuff. And then a water purifier. <laughs> Is that a good idea? So yeah, I'm all survival gear, <laughs> photos and a water purifier. That's what I would take if I could go to a desert island. Um, and I was like shipwrecked or something. Okay, this one is, the next one is from Zeusfra. Zeus. Um, what jobs have you done previously? I have, well, first of all, when I left school, well, no, during school, I was a cleaner at um, Guthrie Court. <laughs> Anybody know that? And it's a home for older adults. I was a cleaner there. And then I went to college and I did my HNC in child care, my HNC in social care. And then I went on and did a degree in um, child health nursing, but only did one and a half years. So I got my HNC in health care. So then I went to work in an army creche because my first husband was a soldier. So you got to work in an army creche, which I absolutely loved. Then I got a job part time in a private nursery. I loved to bits but got made redundant. Then I got a job in Tynecastle Nursery School which is in Edinburgh and I worked in the nursery class which I absolutely loved to bits but left there um, because I got a job in George Heriot's private school which is in Edinburgh 
I absolutely loved it and I worked in the after school club and that was one of my bestest jobs in the entire history of the world, I loved it. We did part time hours during term time, full time hours during holiday time and then sometimes I got nursery nurse jobs in the morning which just upped my wage and it was just my bestest job and that's the one that I left the most recent um, when I was on maternity leave with the boys. Okay, right, okay. Num uh, well, there was two questions, Suze. Um, if you could change any part of your body, what? 100% my bum and my boobs. That would be it. Okay, then on to Taz. Right, so it's T-S-A-M-G-N. Okay, you know who you are. Right, do you have Thanksgiving? No, we don't celebrate Thanksgiving in the UK, but because it's like, obviously, American traditions have moved over here sometimes. Like, well, not tradition. So Halloween is Halloween. And they say it started in Ireland. But we've taken a lot of the Americanisms and brought it over here. So with Thanksgiving, I do say Happy Thanksgiving to all my American friends. And it's nice to think of them all having some fun eating turkey. But no, we don't celebrate it. And how often do you get together with your girlfriends? Not as often as I would like. All my girlfriends are back home in Scotland, most of them. So really, I only have one super duper close girlfriend here. And that's my sister-in-law. And we get together at least once a month. But we talk on the phone every second day. And I text her about five times a day. <laughs> so we're always in constant, um, in constant touch. But we meet every Friday when I take the boys over. And generally every second Saturday or every month, depending on our money. But the thing with Jackie is, which is really good, is she is, we're both so close that if we don't see each other, there's no pressure, which is the kind of friend I love because pressure is so hard where you have to always, oh, I have to go out or if I don't go out, she's not going to talk to me, which Jackie wouldn't be like that. So if I said, oh, I can't go out for Christmas because I'm skint, she'd be like, oh, cool. But I would know that she'd still be my bestest friend in the world and would never hold that against me, which is why I absolutely love being her friend because she is a really good friend. Uh, thank you for that question. Now on to Mary OH64. Hello Mary. CB Mary. Right okay so Mary says how do you like living in Wales? I do like it. I like it a lot. I mean I think home is where your heart is and that's an Elvis song but it's very very true because when I first moved down I was resistant. No I, I, I did move down quite easily because I'd had the baby and Edinburgh held a few memories for me so moving away was quite easy but then when I was first down I kind of missed back home and I really missed being back home in Scotland and that was quite hurt like it just felt homesick I guess but then my mum moved down and it felt better my sisters have come down and been around us and that felt better so I do miss home all the time but recently when we went back home to Scotland well last year I said to my husband, I can't wait to go home. Because even though I might not fit in in Wales entirely, I don't fit back home in Scotland entirely. Because if I went back home there, I wouldn't have my husband and my kids. So if I stay here, I don't have Scotland. So either way, I'm kind of like in between worlds, really. So I'm kind of in between. I don't class Wales as my home. Like, I do, I do class, right. I class my, my house and my kids and my family as my home. But maybe Wales not as my homeland. Because I am from Scotland and I'm Scottish and that's it. I'll never be any other nationality. I'll never want to be. And that's it. 100%. But I don't think I could move home back home. Because, well, they wouldn't move with me. <laughs> so they'd be on my own. So I couldn't do that. I would be lonely for them. So I guess wherever they went is would where I would be. I think if... Like now I've moved from Scotland, I can move anywhere. I can move to America, Australia, and I would just be as happy anywhere. I've not, so maybe that's a point. I've not grabbed onto Wales and went, this is my homeland. It's just them I've grabbed onto and it dies family. And maybe if all of them moved and we moved to America, I could happily live there just as much, but still miss Scotland and still crave to go home. As long as I go back once a year, it's okay. We missed last year, which I'm determined next year no, we missed this year, but I'm determined for next year to be the one that I go home and see my dad especially. And then the last question, which was the first question that I got, is from Miss Sparkly Mess. And she sent me this privately and she said, what is your most and least favourite thing about YouTube? 
Okay, the most thing I love about YouTube is all the friends that I've met, all the subscribers, all the chat, because there's some amazing people that I've met and some amazing people that I talk to daily and I just love it. And there's some unbelievable kind people out there who send stuff to me and then I feel like I can send them stuff. And I just think it's a lovely world. I love YouTube. I absolutely love filming videos. I love putting them up. I love waiting for the... um subscriber count to go up I love the views going up I just love it I love the whole thing and it's really really cool the least things that I love about YouTube hmm, are the dislike button I don't like it I wish they would take it away and take away the like button as well but then everyone has to have an opinion I've never pressed the dislike button in my life mine but I am um, yeah I don't like the dislike button it's a bit sad it makes me feel bad but then when I got that 73 like dislikes kind of got me used to it so now, as long as it doesn't top 73, I think I'll be okay. Watch this, this will get 80. Um, and the other things I dislike about YouTube. I think that's it. That is it. It's that and um, the unexpected because anybody can comment on any of your stuff. So sometimes if I've put up a video, it's maybe a little bit more talkative and maybe about something that might get people talking. I always get really get concerned that I might have to um, delete comments because I always stand by and I know that's a public forum and you can comment whatever you like on public forums but if there's anything rude or unkind or just not nice to a person then I will just delete and block and I know that some people maybe don't agree with that but I don't want any negativity on my page now obviously if you put up oh I don't like that box I think it's rubbish then you're not going to delete that or if somebody said oh I hate your hair it's not very nice not going to delete that. It's when someone put up on my thing, um, stop doing YouTube videos and look after your children. Things like that I will delete and block because that makes me feel sad and it's just not a nice thing to say. And if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it. But yeah, you can say anything <laughs> and everybody's got a... But it's just if it's rude or unkind. So sometimes I wait for those comments and get panicky thinking, oh, they might come. So that can be a negative thing for YouTube. But I think that would be about it, really. Right, okay. So that is 24 minutes of my question and answer. I absolutely loved doing that video. I thought it was really, really good fun. And I hope I answered all the questions and you enjoyed the answers. And I hope you got to the end. <laughs> so it was a long one. All right, thanks for joining me. Take care of yourself. Have a fantastic day, whatever you're doing. And I'll see you on another video soon. Bye. -bye. On my channel. Hello. Comment below. Press the bell button. Thumbs up. Thank you.